You're listening to Bark and Wag's 15-Minute Vet Talk. Each week, your host, Polly Requa, interviews veterinarians and individuals in the pet industry from across the nation answering pet questions. Bark and Wag podcast is produced weekly for your enjoyment, and show notes can be found at BarkandWag.com under the podcast tab. That's B-A-R-K-N-W-A-G.com. Please remember to subscribe to Bark and Wag 15-Minute Vet Talk. Welcome to Bark and Wag 15 Minute Vet Talk. I'm your host, Polly Requa. Today we're talking to one of our favorite vets, Dr. Laura Brown, owner of Green Tree Animal Hospital in Libertyville, Illinois, regarding rabies. Welcome, Dr. Brown. Hi, Polly. On a previous podcast, we discussed what rabies is and where the virus comes from. But in Colorado, two dogs have gotten rabies. What does that mean for the dog? What does it mean for the owner? And did the dogs get the rabies because they did not have the shot? So rabies is a virus and there is prevention for rabies like any virus is to get the rabies vaccine, right? So this will be similar to like if if you get the measles vaccine, technically you won't get the measles, right? So it's sort of like kids getting all their vaccinations as young kids the reason you do that is because you if you get exposed to the viruses then you won't get sick your body makes antibodies against those viruses and then when you get exposed to the virus it attacks it and kills it so that you don't get sick from that so once you have been exposed to the virus there is no specific treatment for it you only get to treat the symptoms that you have so for instance when you have the flu If you didn't get the flu vaccine, and the flu is kind of a bad example because it's not 100% protective, but we'll use that example. When you get the flu, you don't get anti-flu drugs. You just have to drink lots of water, take medicine for your headache, stay, you know, take medicine for your fever, rest and all of that. And then your body fights it off and you get better. Rabies is one of those viruses. If you get it, it's usually fatal. Hmm. People and dogs and other animals. Horses can get it. Sheep can get it. The only animals that are a little bit kind of resistant to it are rodents, but they can still get it. Any warm-blooded mammal could still get it. So it's a bad one. It's deadly. It affects your central nervous system and causes bad brain infection, inflammation, and things like that. Because it's so contagious then through saliva to another animal, usually animals that are diagnosed with rabies are euthanized or die of the disease. Okay, okay. It's not one to mess around with. Okay, and so do you think that the two dogs that got rabies was because they weren't vaccinated, or do you think they were puppies and they were bitten by a raccoon? or Maybe. I don't know the circumstances there, but if they were vaccinated, they had a better chance, already vaccinated, they had a better chance of fighting it off, right, because they would have antibodies. Two, if they were showing symptoms and they were vaccinated, it might be too late. Okay. If they got bit by a rabid animal, the rabies vaccine is very effective. So my guess is they were either puppies that weren't vaccinated or dog, adult dogs that weren't vaccinated. So it's- And or had something wrong with their immune system too. Okay. So it's very important to get your dog vaccinated, and especially with rabies, it's, it's every five years. Three, well, in Illinois, it's different per county. So we have a one-year rabies vaccination and a three-year rabies vaccination in the county. See, that's the vaccine is regulated by the county or the state because of its fatalness to people. So that's why if a dog bites a person and they're not vaccinated for rabies, the dog isn't, then as long as the dog is kept confined or in quarantine or kept an eye on for 10 days and it doesn't become sick, then all is well. If an animal, let's say a stray dog bites a person and runs off and no one knows who it is, and it's a stray dog, and because rabies is a nervous system disease, it seems that normally that the dog might be out of its mind, let you know, in quotes, Mm -hmm. and bite when it normally wouldn't, but it's sick. It has a central nervous system disease, so it bites somebody runs off and no one sees it again, then the person who got bit needs to go through rabies prophylactic vaccinations. Because if the dog did have rabies, goes off and dies in the woods somewhere, and the people don't 
get vaccinated and it truly had rabies, then the people will get rabies, could get rabies. And that has been, there's been one case of a woman who didn't die from rabies, but most people that actually get exposed to rabies, which is a very small number, do not die. Do die. I'm sorry. They do die. And it's a horrible death. Mm. So it's that bad of a virus. And it's, that's why it's regulated by most law enforcement, either there's a rabies control officer, you know, a rabies, we, we have a county group that regulates that. Okay. If for instance, and the bad part about that is there's no test for rabies in an alive animal. It's always done postmortem mm. because you have to test their brain for the virus. Dr. Brown, we're going to take a short break to hear from our sponsor, Rover.com. Rover is the nation's largest network of five-star pet sitters and dog walkers. Through Rover, pet parents can discover, book, and manage personalized care for their dogs, including pet sitting, dog walking, in-home dog boarding, and doggy daycare. As the nation's largest national network of five-star pet sitters and dog walkers, Rover is here for you. Rover offers access to reviewed, trusted pet sitters and dog walkers for every dog, owner, and lifestyle. Your dog deserves the best. Only 20% of sitters who begin their profiles are ultimately accepted to become Rover pet sitters. With Rover's convenient app, you can search, book, favorite, and pay. Receive adorable photos, detailed maps of your dog's walk, and custom updates free in-person interviews and home environment visits to find the perfect match between sitters, owners, and pets. For $25 off your first booking, visit rover.com slash vet talk and use promo code vet talk during checkout. We're back talking to Dr. Laura Brown about rabies. Have you, you ever can, treated? Have you ever I had? Have, no. So in vet school, when I was in vet school, there was a, a ram in the large animal clinic that had rabies that was sick for it came in with neurologic signs and it wasn't my case and that's been 30 years ago but I'm pretty sure once they figured out it had rabies or thought that it had rabies they euthanized it and tested its brain hmm. and then every person that was exposed to that ram had to go through rabies prophylactic shots Oh, Which wow. way back then was the ones where you get it in your stomach and all of that. Nowadays, you don't have to do that, but it's a series of three. They don't know the interval. Mm-hmm. Um, and that would protect you, bef- but you have to do that before you have symptoms to be successful. Wow. Well, that'd be hard to know. That's why if you get bit by a stray animal, mm-hmm. you have to go through it unless there's the animal is confined and quarantined. And if they have full on active rabies, when they bite you, they're going to be sick themselves, really sick themselves and either die or be euthanized within the first 10 days to two weeks. So that's why those kinds of animals get quarantined Mm -hmm. and any animal that bites someone, at least our county laws are, they stay home. If the the difference is if that particular animal is vaccinated or not. So if the animal is is up to date on its rabies vaccine, then there's less chance that it's going to transmit rabies anyway. It's not, it didn't bite you because it's sick. It just bit you because it bit you for whatever reason. But there's all the bites are treated the same way because of the fatalness of rabies in a person. So any dog that bites somebody has to be either home quarantined if if their vaccines are current. They come in to see us. We do a rabies observation exam the first day. And on the 10th day, they come back in to see us. And we look at them and prove that say they don't have rabies and sign off on them so that person is confident that they're the dog that bit them isn't sick Mm. if the vex if the dog that bit somebody's not vaccinated then the county usually takes them to their facility and keeps an eye on them for 10 days so it can't run off so it can't get loose so that everybody knows where that animal is 10 days later to make sure it's not sick Mm. wow okay yeah it's a big deal yeah, it sounds like uh, it. It's a huge deal. My, um, as veterinarians, we're all pre-vaccinated. Like it, we there is a way to get vaccinated against rabies, and vet- we were vaccinated in vet school. Um, it's a, a very expensive vaccine. It has the potential for being very reactive. Like you don't feel good, you can have like a 
allergic reaction to it. So you have to sit in the doctor's office for a half hour or so after the vaccine. But therefore, I have rabies antibodies Mm -hmm. in case I do get exposed to rabies because I have a greater risk of getting exposed to that than just a pet owner. And so in case I did get vac- get exposed to it, I, there's a good chance that I, my antibodies would fight it off and I wouldn't get sick. But if I got exposed, I'd get revaccinated. If I got exposed and I knew I got exposed, I'd get revaccinated. Okay, so let me ask you this. If you're exposed, is it through a bite wound? Yes. Yeah, so the saliva of the pet that has, or the animal that has rabies, um, transmits it through their saliva. Okay. So technically, they could, if you got a scratch probably not going to be exposed, but if they have to pass it through their saliva. So who's to say you don't get a scratch and then they drool on you? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, sure. So you've got an open wound or blood exposed, you know, your skin has been broken and there's blood exposure and then the animals drooling on you. So technically these animals that have rabies are super sick. They're neurologic. They're seizuring. They're stumbling Aww. around, they're blind, they are, they're drooling, you know, they're not, they're very, very, very sick. Mm. Okay. So regular, regular peeps aren't going to be exposed to these animals, regular people, sorry, my professional <laughs> words, and regular people aren't going to be exposed to rabies. But let's say those dogs in Colorado that got rabies were chasing down a sick raccoon. So the raccoon has rabies and is acting weird. And the dog chases it down. That's where they get exposed usually. Okay, because the raccoon bites the dog. Right. They fight. The dog's like chasing the raccoon and the raccoon's sick and fighting back, you know, or doing whatever bites the dog. Okay. The other way, the other big way for rabies exposures is through infected bats. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. We discussed that in the last podcast. Yeah. And I'll, I'll put that in the show notes so that people can go back to the original. Yeah. About what bats are... How, how they they cause rabies. Yeah, and the main thing about bats is when people find bats in their homes or whatever, they need to not touch them and take them, put them in a, you know, try and trap them without being touched by them and taking them to a count the county, like there's a rabies control officer in Lake County, Illinois. So take the bat to them and they get it tested and find out if it has rabies or not. Okay, okay. So you don't have to wonder. So don't ever, if anyone, fi- like, there's been stories of dogs, you know, and people, they wake up in their bedroom and there's a bat on their bed. Well, don't just throw the bat out in the garbage. Take it somewhere. Take it to the authorities to be tested. And then you don't have to wonder about it. Right. And yeah, that's yeah. We sometimes up at the cabin, we'll sleep with tennis rackets. <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, yeah. if you they can sneak down old chimneys and some people have them living in their attics and they don't even know about it. Right. Exactly. So, right. Yeah. Well, thank you for all the tips and we look forward to having you back on the podcast. Thank you. One last thing. Just make sure all your pets, cats, indoor cats and your dogs get their rabies vaccinations on a timely basis. Yes. This is a very big lesson, I'll say. It is. Thanks, okay. Kelly. Thank you. This Bark and Wag has been brought to you by Rover. Whether you need in-home dog boarding, pet sitting, dog walking or daycare, Rover connects pet parents with dog people who will treat their pets like family. Rover sitters are your rainy day dog walkers, your everyday belly rubbers, your tug of war players, your middle of the night pee breakers. Because we get it, your dog is family. And when you can't be there, you can trust them to keep your dog happy and healthy. And Bark and Wag has a special offer for your first booking. Get $25 off. Visit rover.com slash vet talk and use promo code vet talk during checkout. That's rover.com slash vet talk and promo code vet talk during checkout. Thank you for listening to Bark and Wag's 15-Minute Vet Talk. If you like what you just heard, we hope you'll pass along our web address, www.barkandwag.com, to your friends and other pet owners. Have a pressing question for a veterinarian? Ask your question at barkandwag.com under the podcast tab. This has been a KFR production. Join us next time for another edition of Bark and Wag's 15-Minute Vet Talk.